Welcome to Mom and Mine, a podcast about maternal mental health, from conception to pregnancy and postpartum. Real stories from moms and family members who have made it from struggling to wellness, and interviews with experts and advocates who work for moms and families to get the help they need. We discuss very real struggles that can sometimes be hard to hear, but these are stories that need to be told so that moms and families can know that healing is possible. This podcast is meant to offer information and awareness and is not a replacement for treatment by a professional. Thank you for being with us today. This episode touches on topics that may be sensitive for some listeners. Welcome to Mom and Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Kat. On this episode, we have the awesome Liz Brown to talk about her experience with depression during pregnancy. Liz Brown is a writer and former social worker specializing in emergency mental health. She holds an MSW from UCLA and was recently published on Vice.com for her memoir piece about pregnancy depression entitled, What It's Like to Be Pregnant, Depressed, and Scared of Pills. Thank you so much for being here, Liz. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so thankful to you that you are willing to come on and share your story, what your experience was of dealing with depression during pregnancy. Uh, so please let us know from, from wherever you'd like to start, what happened? Sure. I'm 40 years old now, and I had had some history with depression when I was younger in college, um, and I'd gotten through it. And then a few years back, I had another bout of it and had um, started taking many different kinds of medication. And none of which were really working very well. And I finally at some point decided I was uh, that I really wanted to have a baby and that that was something that was really missing from my life and decided I wanted to get off all medication to be pregnant. I was dead set that I wasn't going to be taking anything while I was pregnant. And mm-hmm. uh, because I'm a little bit older, a combination of some other women that I knew who had had fertility problems and the, uh, the terrible idea of just Googling what it's like to get pregnant when you're yeah. in your late 30s sort of put me into a panic that yeah. I was running out of time and that I needed to, you know, to start trying as soon as possible. So let's see, I was on four different medications and I went off there. I think it was four months I got off within. Mm-hmm. So that is really, really fast. I was on a lot of different stuff and I got up very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. And as luck would have it, we got pregnant on our very first try, which was great. But you know, I was about two weeks off of all of the medication and we'd also just had a death in the family. And then all of a sudden uh-huh. I was pregnant and it was very, very intense, uh, very quickly. Yeah. So almost immediately, once I was off all of the medication, one of them was um, an SSRI, Selexa. The SSRIs are like the, for anyone listening who doesn't know, are like the most common antidepressants that you probably have heard about like Zoloft or Prozac or Lexapro and stuff like that. And while they can be very helpful, the withdrawal from them is very, very difficult. You can have all sorts of uh, symptoms. And in addition to anxiety and depression coming back, you can also have like dizzy spells or nausea or uh, palpitations, weird dreams. So I was having all of these things and then also was suddenly pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, It was really, really hard. So Let's see. I mean, I was still determined to stay off medication, but I knew I needed some help pretty quickly. Let's see. So the first few weeks of the pregnancy were pretty hard. And, you know, I was also scared because of my age and, you know, the high rates of miscarriage at that age. So I started looking around for help, non-pharmaceutical uh, help mm-hmm. um, for the depression and anxiety symptoms that I was having. And let's see, my OBGYN had recommended that I go to UCLA. There's a center at UCLA called the Women's Life Center that's specifically po- focused on postpartum depression and pregnancy depression. And I was had, you know, found that and they had a, a last minute appointment open. So I thought that that was going to solve all my problems. Yeah. And then when I got there, I realized it was just a medication clinic. And, you know, uh-huh. they strongly recommended that I, I start taking some antidepressants. And I was like, absolutely not. I'm definitely not taking any. I was, you know, actually, actually very angry that they had suggested it. I was hoping that they would have, you know, support groups or, you know, any, any other sort of way um, for me to feel better without having to take the medication because um, there are so many risks to taking antidepressants when you're pregnant. There can be all sorts of physical problems if you take them in your first trimester and then all sorts of cognitive uh, issues when you take them in your third trimester. 
Um, there's lots of speculation that uh, it, it can cause or at least increase the rates of autism. So I was, you know, I really didn't want to take any. So I said, you know, screw it. I'm not doing what they said. I'm not listening to them at all. I'm going to find my own way to um, help myself. Since I used to be a social worker and worked in emergency mental health, I was like, I'm sure I can find in the city of 18 and a half million people, um, lots of assistance for pregnant women with depression. And I pretty quickly found out that there were not very many resources at all. Mm -hmm. And the few resources that I did find kept bringing me back to postpartum groups, postpartum depression. And I couldn't find anything for pregnancy depression. Uh Um, And I started to get really frustrated and I started you know, calling around to all these different places. And I just felt sort of shut out. Like there was no place for me to go. And I I couldn't believe it. And I had tried looking on the search engine at Maternal Mental Health Now. um, And the places I found on there, I called a few of them. And for whatever reason, they didn't have anything available at that time, or it was just for postpartum. And I really, really started to to, um, break down because uh, my symptoms were getting worse and worse and um, scarier and scarier. And um, I couldn't find uh, help anywhere. And actually the first group that I found that ha- offered um, some assistance for both par- postpartum and uh, prenatal mental health was your group, which was yes. quite a ways away from me, <laughs> which about 40 miles ahead. outside of the city. And I was like, that's fine. I'll go. And so I drove, um, drove out to your group, which was great, but, um, uh, you know, still really, really hard to, um, to find something close to me, um, where I felt like, you know, I guess the hardest part of that was, you know, I drove all of that way and out to see you and there were some other lovely women in the group. And again, it was, they were all dealing with postpartum Mm -hmm. and, you know, it just sort of made me feel like, oh God, am I seriously the only one out there who's got, Mm -hmm. uh, depression and anxiety while they're pregnant. And I knew I couldn't be because the statistics show that it's about 10%, I guess, um, of women uh, suffer from this. But I felt like, why can't I find anybody else who's going through this? So that made me feel really scared and alone. You know, eventually it was just so intense. The depression was so intense. I started having suicidal thoughts, which was terrifying. And um, I decided I had to go back on some dose of medication and so how far was, along were, were you pregnant at I that was point? five I was exactly halfway through I was mm-hmm. uh, 20 yeah. weeks along and um, that's when I decided I was going to start taking so I took my prescription that I'd gotten from the Women's Life Center and I filled it and I just felt terrible about myself I was like mm-hmm. I can't believe I'm doing this but I felt like I didn't have a much of, that much of a choice you know I was like I have to do something and mm-hmm. I'm not going to make it I mean, I'm barely making it now, and I'm only halfway there. And, you know, I researched everywhere I could about the potential risks, and I decided, you know, I'm going to have to, I have to do it Um, Mm -hmm. because my doctors and my therapists and uh, my, like, OBGYN and my own therapist I had gone to and um, a psychiatrist that I had gone to who was more into more natural sort of treatments all said the amount of stress that I was under was likely going to cause some damage to the fetus um, because it was so intense and that, you know, it was probably time to try the medication. So I did it and I tried it and I started feeling at least a little bit better, like almost immediately. Like I had had these horrible uh, panic attacks with like really crushing pain in my chest and the choking feelings and those started to dissipate at least a little bit within a week or so. And then I started feeling better, but I kept the dosage so small because I was so scared that it was really like not enough for me to be fully well. So then what I did was, well, I was going to therapy, but I decided, you know, I still needed more help. And so I went to a day treatment program, which is sort of like, Mm -hmm. it's like going to a psychiatric hospital, but you go home at night I went for like four hours a day to a, a mm-hmm. bunch of different groups and I was the only pregnant person there. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I sort of cobbled together my own sort of treatment plan that was not pregnancy specific. I went to a therapist. I went to the state treatment program. I did acupuncture. I 
did uh, yoga. I went to um, like a 12-step support group, Al-Anon. And um, yeah, I just did everything I could um, mm -hmm. to try and keep keep getting through and not take you know, a lot of medication. And I did, I made it finally through to the end. And I had a beautiful, healthy baby. But it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was really, really hard. So, uh, wow. I mean, that that's quite a, a story of survival. You, you know, you searched around so much as, and so far to find this help and support that you needed. And you still kept going when you couldn't find it. And you know, you made your own, your own treatment program. It's just amazing right. what, what you went through and what you kept, uh, that you kept up the efforts to, to it was put really all of these intense. pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. And, and also it, you're, I mean, speaking to the really, the deep need that there is for pregnant moms to have this, the support and to not, ha I mean, when you're already depressed and anxious and all stressed out, it's really hard to figure out how to take care of yourself. Um, and yeah, to find and I was resources. just blown away by, you know, I was like, oh, well, this will be no problem. I'll just find a, a group for pregnancy depression. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, where's all the groups? And then, right. you know, as a social worker, I'm pretty skilled in finding very specific resources for people. Like I worked mm -hmm. in a um, group where uh, we, I would find uh, case management for foster kids I did, and I would have to mm -hmm. find you know, a very specific type of activity for a specific age group who lived in a specific right. zip code. And, you know, yeah. I was able to find these things, but for pregnancy depression in LA, I wasn't able to find a specific group for it. And I was just shocked. Mm -hmm. And I even had trouble finding like online support for it. So I just was, you know, it really hit me hard. Like, God, am I the only one going through this? And, so um, hard. Yeah, it made me feel even more isolated. And then uh, I got really, really angry. And I was like, I have to write about this. I, I yes. don't know if anybody's going to publish it, but I'm so angry. I have to channel this into something, try and mm -hmm. do some good. So I was very fortunate. I pitched it to a couple of places who passed, but then uh, an editor advice said she was interested in it. So I was very, very happy about that. Right. I'm so glad that they were interested and that they published. And I mean, the, the way that you, you write it is really a good look at kind of the progress that you had through this period of time, um, like you just outlined for us now, and how frustrating. I mean, even talk, talking to you about it now, just how frustrating it must have been. And it was for you to be searching and searching and not getting the, the kind of yep. help that you you want. And you also spoke to a couple of things that I think a lot of moms deal with, pregnant moms for sure, and postpartum moms too, is this like the searching for information and then the bombardment of all of the information that you get right. uh, when you're just trying to, to look for help. Like you, you right. think it should be right at your fingertips and then right. <laughs> you go in, into these pits of information and uh, and then find other things to be really worried about. Oh, yeah. And I mean, there's nothing worse than, I mean, there's sort of like the old joke of like, you never want to Google your symptoms because, you know, they'll mm -hmm. tell you you have like bubonic plague or something, you know, <laughs> WebMD is just great and also terrifying because yeah, exactly. it'll tell you you have uh, any bizarre disease. But, you know, to mm -hmm. just Google antidepressants in pregnancy, it is terrifying. I mean, right. just like the list of things that can go wrong and all of the problems that they could have. And then you see, okay, well, it's really only a 2% chance that these things are going to happen. But then you're so nervous and worried already. And you're like, right. I, eat I, well and exercise and do yeah. everything healthy and be, be away from people who are smoking and you know, drink and you're not around anything dangerous. And, you know, you're putting up air filters and then you're like, oh, wait, I'm going to take this pill that could potentially be so uh, so dangerous to him. I mean, it was really, it was really hard. Um, right. And you highlight a really good point, too, is that even if the risk is statistically very small, when you feel responsible for something growing and a person growing inside of you, right. it's almost like that risk might as well say it's like most, it's almost likely uh, right. because... Uh, because it feels so scary to to be taking that risk, even right. with, you know, the doctor saying, well, you know, actually, the risk is very low, or those right. studies aren't accurate, or whatever, right. you know, 
um, and then of it course, feels um, intense. Yeah, and then of course I I gave birth in February, and right around December, this big study came out that said antidepressants more more dangerous than we ever imagined when you're pregnant, and that was just devastating to me. They said they can, you know, the risk of autism um, when you take antidepressants while you're pregnant is double what we thought. Um, was the headline on all of the websites and it was on you know the Today Show I think and some other right. um, morning news programs and I was just devastated. It was like everywhere I looked when I went on the computer, and it just said double the risk, double the risk. And then I really looked at it and it was really like okay, they said one percent chance before and now it's two percent, but it just like almost stopped my heart. I was so scared when I saw it. Yeah. And I, you know, for a couple of days, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go off. I'm not going to take this medication anymore, which um, thankfully I changed my mind and stayed on the medication. But for a second there, I was like, I can't do this. I can't take well, this. Well, right. Risk. Yeah. And I am glad you pointed that out, that the way that, um, you know, outlets write oh, double the risk and things like that, it's, it's a terrifying thing to put in front of people who are already like you said, trying to take care of their health in this really, really sensitive way, not being around smoke and all like all of those things you said. And it, and it, it just, and it makes people more scared. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, and it might as well again say, yeah, it's 50% more likely, right. but who all has the time to go and read all of the research to see what that 50% or twice the likelihood, what that actually means. And then, how do you, you know, how can you, when you're in this position of what it sounds like the position you were in of having to choose between keeping yourself alive and with medication that felt necessary to take and the guilt of feeling like you're going to do harm to your child. That's a really almost impossible predicament. Yeah, I felt like I was in an impossible situation. And then, I mean, I'm a writer and have written online and I know that part of the thing that you do is you try and make the the title of your articles as enticing as possible. And sometimes that means, you know, making it a little more salacious than it really is. So, you know, people, they'll write articles like terrible news about <laughs> antidepressants and pregnancy. And, you know, the, the headline a lot of the times is the only thing that people read. Um, uh, true. true. And so, yeah, it really, it's hard. So I really recommend for any article that you hear, you know, don't just read the headline. Don't just read the the quick explanation of what's going on. Really dig in deeper, especially with mm-hmm. medical stuff and stuff that, you know, yeah. you know, affects health choices you might make. Just take right. everything in the media right now with a grain of salt and really do your own research on it. Yeah, and, and that's hard to do. It's hard to do when you're not feeling well and right. when you're overwhelmed by all that's going on. So... Uh, I mean, you you touched on a little bit the kind of uh, the guilt that you felt with taking the medication. Mm -hmm. How did you manage that? Um, It was, you know, it helped to go to groups. Um, The group therapy helped me at the day treatment program that I went to and going to my own therapy helped. But again, there was no one else in there in my exact situation. I mean, a lot of people who take uh, medication who aren't pregnant deal with guilt you know, from taking it, they feel weak, they feel inferior because they have to take or have been told to take some sort of medication and feel like, you know, they don't want to do it, not even being pregnant. So Mm -hmm. there were some people who were able to relate to me with that, but then, and oh, you know what, actually, that's not true. There was another woman in the group who had taken it when she was pregnant. She had taken an antidepressant when she was pregnant and told me that things had worked out fine for her. But, you know, it was still scary to not have anyone else in the exact situation. I was glad to have other people around who were really, really encouraging, though, and understood just basic depression and anxiety mm-hmm. and panic right. so they could understand what I was going through. And then I had this additional twist with the with the baby um, that they couldn't relate to. But, yeah, it, felt, it always feels good, I think, to be around other people who can relate to what you're going through. 
Uh, yeah, it does. Like you, you were speaking to the just the the feeling of being alone in the beginning, and even coming to my group that that specific day, there wasn't a pregnant woman in right. there, and that sucks. Right, <laughs> I right. wish there had been another pregnant woman in there for you because, right, it added to feeling isolated, and you can't not feel isolated until you feel not isolated. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, so getting getting that support around you. Gosh, sounds like a really, really big part of you getting through this, just having yeah. people who could listen and understand and help you cope. Yep. So part of your healing journey, though, wasn't uh, you You had a multi-tiered uh, plan with the, the therapy itself, yep. medication, and you did some other stuff like acupuncture. What, what were the kinds of other things that really helped you? in addition to therapy and medication? I love yoga. Yoga has been very helpful for me. Um, and uh, I did a little bit of the prenatal yoga, but I found, because my anxiety is so high, I have to work out pretty hard to to help uh, chip away at it. So I actually did some of, uh, went back to my regular studio and did some of the regular yoga, not the prenatal yoga, and just modified it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I really like doing yoga. That was very helpful for me. And I do believe that the, the acupuncture helped me some, exercising a lot, writing helped some, and yeah, definitely the group, the group experience was helpful. Uh, writing for yourself or writing in general? Um, just write uh, both, um, like journal writing as well as um, just working on creative projects because that's okay. my passion and what I love to do. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was helpful for me too. Okay, great. Well, I, I do love to hear uh, that because I think I think some people feel like the only option is medication. And certainly when you went in to get help, that's it seemed like that that was the only right. option. And that can be scary for a lot of people. Yeah, I think the thing that blew me away the most was when I was writing this article and I talked to the director of maternal mental health now, Karen Post. I, you know, I was really trying to get to the bottom of where are all the support groups for you know, women, pregnant women with depression. And I think the most amazing <laughs> insight I gained was that she and some other therapists I talked to afterwards had said that they had formed these support groups and that no one was showing up to them. And that mm -hmm. not only was nobody showing up, like nobody wanted to label themselves as pregnant and depressed or pregnant with any sort of mental health problem. And mm -hmm. Karen was telling me, you know, it's sort of like there there are support groups. They're just not called pregnancy depression support groups. They'll be called yeah. like New Moms Connect or, you know, pregnancy help or, you know, just sort of like general pregnancy support groups, right. which I had seen online, but, you know, was like, oh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for one right. specifically for pregnant women with mental health problems. And it was it was very interesting to me and sort of uh, cracked open this mystery that I had been, you know, sort of reeling over it, that it's not that the groups aren't there. It's sort of, they have to market them differently because mm -hmm. the internalized stigma of being pregnant and depressed is so intense that it even is. if you want that help, you might not even go to the group because you don't want to label yourself in that way. That, that's absolutely true uh, for pregnancy and for postpartum, even for the group that I run, I, it's a pregnancy and postpartum stress group right? Uh, because the, the word depression, the word anxiety, e either a couple of things, either people don't identify with that. Like right. I'm not depressed. I'm actually anxious or I don't want to see myself as depressed or anxious right. or those words are for crazy people. Right. They're for crazy uh, people. You know, I'm not crazy. Right, exactly. So people tend to stay away, but but then there's you know there's the problem of how to how to find it. Right. <laughs> and and this is the thing you were saying before, you know, about resources. I mean, you looked all up and down everywhere because you looked so many places and couldn't find it. It I think it adds to the feeling of responsibility right. that uh, that is on you to figure it out. Right. Um, and it's really difficult in this day and age of you know technology to to put all the right you know, search engine optimization stuff in there so that when somebody right. types in just the right thing, that they'll find just the right thing. So there is still a lapse in between what's available and how people find it. And right. you ran into that head on. Yep. And it was like, oh, these things are there, but they had remarketed them. Mm -hmm. So people wouldn't be afraid. And then I was all enraged because I couldn't find them marketed to, oh. because I'm, you know, quote unquote, they're out about my 
depression and anxiety. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. like, I demand that there be something for me, <laughs> people like me. But well, it's, it's yeah. an interesting conundrum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you for looking for it and for demanding it. That's how things change. That's how these groups get formed is you sharing your story. Um, thankfully, Vice picked it up. And I'm happy to to spread the word here also, uh, not only for just you and your story, but other pregnant moms who are dealing with stuff and feel like they they shouldn't or they're not supposed to or right. all of these things that you uh, dealt with and are speaking out about. Um, you you and your story are going to help people and moms who are pregnant um, maybe advocate for themselves or or at least demand that there be support on some level. Yes, and a new study also came out this earlier this year um, that was saying that pregnant uh, screening for depression and anxiety should just be part of the OBGYN visits. When you're going for their monthly visits, um, I think Karen may have, have spoken about this too, but they just need to integrate it into, you know, part of your health checkup because, mm-hmm. you know, that's one way that they can start connecting people, you know, directly to resources, you know, to identify early on if you're experiencing this, uh, sort of destigmatize it and then um, try and, and get you help earlier on in the pregnancy so you don't have to suffer with it alone. Right. That the, the alone part is the worst part um, yeah. when you're already feeling so bad. Yeah. Uh, wow. Okay, Liz, thank you so much for sharing all of your story. And I really want to direct people to your article on vice.com, what it's like to be pregnant, depressed and scared of pills. And also, I want you guys listeners to check in to Liz's Twitter at the Liz Brown show. Um, for more information soon, Liz, for Liz's upcoming blog on pregnancy mental health. And I really thank you for doing that, Liz. That's great work. Yes, I hope to have that going by the end of the summer. Oh, awesome. That'll be such a good resource. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your story. I, I know this is going to help so many moms. Uh, thank you again. And thank you for all the help that you do and for uh, helping me out when I was in um, a, a really difficult state. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad I could do a little, little bit of it. By joining us today and listening, you're a part of the growing community of people who are aware and concerned for mothers and families during this beautiful and sometimes very difficult time of life. Please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review this free podcast so that Mom and Mind can be found by moms, families, and providers who will benefit from hearing our talks. If you or someone you know is having a hard time, help is available. Please look for resources for help at momandmind.com, where you will also find links and information from today's episode. Thank you for listening and being a part of the Mom and Mind community.